So I, I'm the responsible of the industrial liaison office of Electra, is the office uh, that I will explain later uh, how, how we work. And I'm a physicist. I was uh, I, I made some research in the past and now I'm working as responsible of this activity. Uh, please, the next slide. Oops. Uh, one back, okay. So uh, what is Electra? Electra is in the Carso near Trieste. It's an international facility. We have two light sources. One is Fermi, it's a free electron laser, and the other one is Electra, that is synchrotron light source. Uh, we have 34 beam lines, so 34 uh, different stations in which we can perform experiments. And we provide to the researchers from every place in the world more, more than 4,000 uh, hours per year of beam time. And we have usually in between uh, 1,000 and 1,000 and a half people that's coming in Electra to make a research uh, for, for very different kind of uh, subjects, starting from material science up to um, life sciences and uh, chemistry or, uh, you know, or pharmaceuticals and, and so on. Please, the next slide. Okay, how does a synchrotron work? Uh, we have a beam of electrons. The electrons are accelerated in a linear accelerator. You see in the center of the uh, left uh, image, you have a straight uh, line. This is the uh, linear accelerator. Then the uh, electrons are put in a ring that's called the booster. In the booster, they are accelerated almost at the uh, speed of light. And then they are, they are uh, in, put into a bigger ring that is uh, Electra itself. And they travel at this uh, speed along this, this ring. When they make a curve in the path, if they are at very high speed, they can emit what is called a synchrotron light. This synchrotron light is a kind of um, electromagnetic radiation. If you turn the uh, next slide, please. Okay, the synchrotron radiation, you can see here the uh, electromagnetic spectrum you will see that uh, we are able to produce radiation uh, beams that come from infrared radiation up to X-rays, um, soft X-rays uh, radiation. In this range, we're able to uh, have a very brilliant beam that is tunable. What that, does it mean, tunable? It means that we can choose whatever frequency, whatever wavelength we want. We can have polarized light. We can get coherent light. So these are very interesting features of the light that can give rise to a lot of kind of experiments that we can do. We have another source that is Fermi. Fermi is uh, a source that can be used for pump and probe experiments. That means that we have very short pulses. Very short means uh, with the length at around 100 femtoseconds. And the very short pulse is very, very brilliant because we have a lot of energy in the pulse. So uh, we have two sources that are quite unique, not only in Italy, because we are the only singleton radiation uh, facility in Italy, but we are unique even in the world because Fermi is one of the most performing uh, free electron lasers that uh, have been built in uh, in everywhere in the world. Please, the next slide. Okay, using the light for experiments is the main activity of Electra. And we are able to perform a lot of kind of experiments and uh, we can use a lot of uh, techniques that use uh, light beams for, for research. I have a sketch here of the different techniques divided into different categories. We have photomission, imaging, scattering experiments, experiments 
with reflection and emission, absorption, we have diffraction, and we are able also to perform some kind of lithography. Very, very um, uh, well, well defined lithography. Uh, I don't want to, of course, explain all the techniques, but I would like to uh, share with you some experiments we did uh, during the uh, years, and I asked my colleagues to give me some uh, some slides just to uh, show you what is possible to be done in the field you are you are working. So uh, I, I excluded a lot of fields, but just I focus on material science and. Uh, mainly metal uh, metal analysis. So please, uh, the next slide. Uh, as I told uh, uh, before, there are other facilities in the world. Just to, I would like to show you uh, the main uh, facilities that are present uh, in the world. Uh, in Italy, there's only Electra. In Europe, there are some. and. Uh, there are also some in the United States and in uh, in the extreme uh, eastern part of our world. Uh, there, they are not too much. There are not too many uh, too many facilities. They are around in between twenty and thirty, and this means that uh, we can uh, be considered one of the. Uh, unique facility in in the world because also there is another feature that each facility has its own characteristics so for this reason is is possible that uh, researcher that uh, works in germany or works in france that they have their own facility could uh, think that his experiment could be performed better in our facility so uh, for this reason the facilities, all the facilities are open to all researchers in the world. And we get, for this reason, a lot of researchers coming from even uh, other countries that have their own facility. Please, the next slide. Uh, could you? OK, thanks. Uh, so this is the way in which it's possible to access to, to Eletra. There's uh, the uh, peer review access that is for public research. This is the process. I don't want to go through all the part, but just to tell you that uh, the process uh, involves the selection of papers and uh, of, of proposals, proposal papers, and uh, the selection uh, by the quality of the research that will be done in the, in the facility. And there's proprietary research that has direct access to without any any review and depends on the interest of the uh, researcher that usually is an interest in a um, industrial interest so usually proprietary research is uh, performed by companies or uh, industries please uh, next slide a few words on how is performed this uh, industrial access to Electra? Uh, there is a, an office, it's the office uh, I manage. And uh, we uh, ha have the possibility to contact companies, to work directly with the companies. The research is proprietary, so this means that we sign an end non disclosure agreement with the companies. All the research is uh, uh, is not public, so uh, is is uh, confidential, and uh, we also are certified ISO certified, and this is also very useful for companies that would like to certify the measurements they they perform at Electra. Please next slide. Okay, so as I told you before, I uh, asked my colleagues to give me some. Uh, possible examples of the activities that uh, they perform in uh, their beam lines. And then we can start with the first uh, technique, that is uh, the photoemission technique. Uh, Fabio, could you please? Uh, OK. Photoemission technique is uh, very, uh, is performed at Electra in uh, a, a very interesting way because photoemission uh, gives the possibility to uh, the researcher to access to the binding energy of the electrons inside the atom. And if you go uh, on, Fabio, 
Okay, uh, what you get is a spectrum like that, in which you can see that uh, when you collect the spectrum with the synchrotron radiation, you could have access to all the uh, energy levels of the electrons that are inside the, 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 the sample. And since each energy is characteristic of the kind of atom you uh, are uh, probing, you can recognize the atoms that are included in the sample. This is also more interesting because uh, you can not only uh, identify the atom, but you can also identify its chemical state. And just uh, depend, this depends just on the energy, uh, different, slightly different energy that has this, uh, this electron inside the atom. And in this way, you can uh, understand if uh, the atom is oxidized or not. And you can also perform studies in uh, a way that uh, you can follow a process because this technique is non-destructive. So you can uh, prepare your experiment uh, and study a reaction inside the chamber of the experiment in which the experiment is done. Uh, this technique gives also the possibility to make quantitative analysis. And so you could have a real chemical, uh, you can understand the real chemical composition of the surface. Uh, please, uh, the next slide. Uh, what difference is, th this technique is also used in uh, laboratories and there are uh, sources that are not synchrotron light that can be used to make this experiment. But what is the difference? Uh, please go, go, go on. If you have a sample like this, that is uh, quite, uh, is not homogeneous, it's quite, it's quite different, it has different regions inside. What you could, could get from a standard source is a medium value of the surface. You see the region that is highlighted in, uh, in uh, pale red. This highlighted region is probed by uh, standard uh, photoemission systems and using standard photoemission system, you could have only a mean value of the surface. So if you go on with the next slide, okay, you could see that using the chemical analysis that we have at the letter, the photoemission tools that we have at the letter, we also could have the average information for all the sample, but we are able to probe very, very small regions. You see the small regions that are uh, in, uh, uh, in the dots uh, that are in the, in the picture. And we can probe just this part. And if you go on, Fabio, with the next slide, you could see in the next, in the other one, because uh, is there, okay, go on, okay. We can, no, no, one back, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so in this, in this slide, you could see just the spectrum of each point that is uh, in the in the upper figure in the in the bottom you see the, the spectrum and the spectra are completely different one with respect to the other because they reflect the uh, composition of the surface so what is important is that we can get also the spatial uh, spatial resolution so we can identify the uh, morphology of the surface. And this is something that is very, very uh, interesting because we can reach uh, dimensions that are in the order of the hundreds of uh, nanometers. So it's very, very small and we can understand the behavior of surfaces at very, very small scale. So please go on. Uh, just to show you an example, we have an aluminum alloy. This aluminum alloy has been probed. You see the uh, A point in the uh, figure in the upper uh, left of the, of the slide, the A point and the B point that are one green and one red. You could see that these two are different. Uh, the image is taken with uh, a scanning electron microscope, but the spectra that are in the bottom part are taken using uh, the um, photoemission probe that we have at Eletra. And as you can see, green and red uh, spectra are completely different and they reflect the different composition of the surface. 
uh, we have two spectra in the bottom and we can see in this way the real difference and we can also be able to um, quantify the differences. If you go on, okay, uh, yeah, please, okay, stop, stop, thanks. Okay, this is another technique, it's called X-ray absorption spectroscopy, and is a technique that gives uh, to the researcher the possibility to explore what is called the um, uh, absorption in the uh, edge of the uh, absorption energies. So what does it mean? Uh, when we have an absorption phenomena, we uh, usually have a radiation that goes through the sample and then part of the radiation is absorbed. We have uh, for each atom a different place in which there is a kind of announcement of this absorption. And this announcement is seen in the picture in the upper uh, right. Here you see that there is a kind of edge. This depends, the position in energy of this edge depends on the uh, on the atom you, you are probing, so depends on the composition of the sample. And then you have a kind of oscillation. This oscillation gives information about the structure of the atoms inside the sample. The structure means the position, uh, means the environment around the uh, atom that is absorbing energy, and you can measure the distance the number of neighbors that are inside and the disorder of this uh, sample. There is another technique, if you go to the next slide, that give also the possibility to uh, have, this is called Xanes, and the Xanes region is the region that is very close to the uh, area in which you have this uh, announcement in the absorption is around 60 electron volts. And here you can have a lot of information about the uh, chemical state of these atoms. If you go on, okay, this is the, uh, in the um, picture in the bottom, you see the uh, features that you can, uh, you can see is a kind of, um, um, region in which you can have a lot of features. There is also what is called pre-edge feature, and these features all together give information on the chemical states. What does it mean? If you go to the next slide, uh, okay, here you have the uh, table in which the, uh, the yellow uh, elements that are highlighted are the elements that could be probed at Eletra. So we have a very wide range of uh, possible elements that we can uh, select. Please go to the next slide. Uh, and we can see different, if we are uh, studying, for instance, iron in uh, its, its different forms, we can have different behaviors near the edge and depending on the behavior, we are able to identify the different states of the iron in the specific uh, specific um, sample. So this is very important for metallographic studies, of course. And uh, what is important is also that we can identify uh, pure uh, phases, but also we can identify a mixture of them. Because if you go on with the next one, okay, we can see that it, making a simple linear co combination of known spectra of specific uh, states and trying to uh, feed these different uh, known states to the sample we are we are probing in this way we can recognize the quantity different quantities of materials that are on the sample and if you go on there is another picture very similar that uh, is kind of uh, mm, database we have a database of different uh, phases and at the, uh, composing these phases of the materials we can identify different components uh, i have an, a special example in the next slide 
uh, that gives you also a, a, an idea of what is possible uh, and is connected to the chromium. The, the case of chromium is uh, chromium is a compound that usually is is present in our um, in the environment depending on the way in which has been uh, uh, discharged by uh, by comp by by industries and the uh, most common oxidation oxidation states are chromium 3 and chromium 6 and these these two states are very different at this kind of uh, of analysis and in this way we can identify very clearly the presence or not of chromium 6 and chromium 3 and the different quantities in the samples we are analyzing. Uh, this is important because uh, chromium 3 is essential for life while chromium 6 has toxical effects. So we have to be able to distinguish in between the two because uh, depending on the presence or not of chromium 6, the area should be uh, changed uh, in and uh, in, in, uh, pu purified. Uh, please uh, go on. OK. Another technique that uh, we, we have uh, at Eletra is a uh, tomography, what is called uh, computed tomography. And as you see here, uh, it's very uh, powerful because uh, a standard radiography you will see in the uh, left image gives you an image of the internal of the body. For instance, this is a, a body, body radiography. And the information is, of course, uh, not, not very clear and is overimposed because the uh, organs that are in front are impressed in the organs that you see in the back. With the tomography, uh, you can see uh, a picture here. You have a detector and an X-ray source that probes your body in different places. And then uh, using a, uh, a software algorithm, it's possible to reconstruct the position com combining all the images that you get from uh, this uh, the, this uh, sum of radiographies that you have, you can combine all the images and get an image that in this case you see in the bottom picture. You can see uh, this image and you can understand better the real uh, composition of the, of the object that you are studying. And OK, this is for, uh, for human body. If we go to the next slide, we can see an example for um, maybe more interesting for you uh, subject. That is here, uh, there was a circuit included in resin, so it was very difficult to uh, to see what was inside. And if you look at the uh, picture in the uh, extreme left of this of the of the slide, you can see. A standard, a standard radiography, and uh, the difference is very clear because with the computed tomography, you are able to reconstruct even uh, the image, even in a 3D, 3D image that can be rotated. You could also cut from a uh, software point of view. You cut the image, and you could see inside what's inside. In this case, you could see the filament in the resistance and if you are uh, pay attention to the image in the center it is possible to um, see differences also in the material composition because uh, you can see in the uh, in the resistance you could see the uh, code of the resistance because it's written with the particular ink that is sensitive to the uh, as a different sensitivity to the to the tomographic image. So this is very powerful, powerful technique that uh, you used in synchrotron uh, we used with synchrotron radiation is even more powerful than uh, if used with standard sources, because these machines are, of course, present in the market and they are uh, um, they use uh, standard sources, X-ray sources, but using synchrotron radiation it is possible to have enhanced, 
uh, enhanced way to to make the measurements and so you have you can access to more features with respect to the standard standard image if you go to the next slide fabio here there's a list of possible uh, uh, differences between uh, the standard systems that are uh, usually in the labs and the uh, synchrotron radiation as a source uh, and the advantages of of course have a monochromatic beam very monochromatic so the monochromaticity is very high you can in this way since there is uh, a radiation that is very brilliant reduce the dose and this is very important for uh, human uh, uh, if you have to take uh, um, Mm, uh, tomographies for for humans for in human uh, for human beings and uh, you don't you don't have in this way uh, what are called hardening effects or hard effects that depend on the hardening induced by the the radiation uh, of the the radiation of the of the uh, tomograph and then also you have high coherence in the radiation and so you can use what is called uh, phase shift. In this way, using phase shift, you could have the enhancement in the, um, in the edges. And if you, we go to the uh, next slide, we can see what does it means. Because using this phase shift and uh, this way, we have a, a contrast that's, that is induced by the different phase of the radiation, we can see that the uh, edges could be enhanced in a way that in the left we have the standard uh, image, while in the right we have the enhanced image. So you can see this is a, a, a plant, you could see that uh, the difference is very, very important. Okay, uh, I, I have some examples here for uh, instance here we have uh, a, con a sam concrete sample uh, and we can analyze the voids that depend on the weathering if you you go uh, on with the slide there, there are some uh, pictures here because what is important for uh, computational technology uh, computational uh, tomography is that you can uh, make analysis of the of the sample and you can you can make the statistics so uh, we are able to recognize three kinds of uh, uh, voids inside the sample and recognizing them is possible also to measure the dimension of the samples and to make sorry of the voids and to have a statistics of the voids that you are uh, you are sampling and so the statistics is uh, in the uh, left uh, graph in the right graphics uh, another example is in the next slide uh, here we have a metal uh, a metal uh, tool that has been uh, produced by by a company and uh, uh, there is an interface because this is uh, made uh, this tool is made uh, with two different um, uh, two different materials that have been uh, put together and uh, in the image at, on the top you see a picture where this difference is is not is not clear and in the bottom image you have a tomographic image this is the external uh, view of a tomographic image as you see there the uh, interface region is very clear and also you can see a dark dot in the uh, lighter region. This dark dot is an inclusion that should not be there. So if we go to the next slide, we can identify the inclusion. And we, since we have a, a, tom a, tomog a tomography, we can identify and measure the inclusion, as you see, measure all the characteristics of the inclusion and see if the inclusion is uh, a sphere, is, can be similar to a sphere, or maybe is a, a long, uh, not a sphere, but a long uh, uh, inclusion, as we can see, for instance, in the next, in the next slide. 
no, sorry, there should be an, okay, no, no, sorry, go on, please. Here. Okay, yes. And this is another case in which we have inclusions. This is another, another tool that we, we analyzed. And this inclusion, you can see two, two features, two inclusions in the image in, in the bottom. This is a, the same image as before, the same kind of images, the external part of a, um, of, of a tomography. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, we can uh, we can identify all the inclusions. We identify them with different colors in the in the image, and we can uh, know exactly the position and the uh, and the um, shape of these inclusions. So this is very important for uh, for for research, but it's very very important also for uh, quality control. Of, of processes and quality control of materials. This, uh, re th these two examples come from a research that we did for Varsila that was interested in uh, analyzing the quality of the samples that uh, they received from, they, from their uh, partners. Uh, we can go to the next uh, subject now. Okay, this is the last one. And uh, Eletra is also a possibility to characterize by X-ray diffraction very different kinds of materials. We have a beamline that is uh, material uh, characterization diffraction beamline, but we have also other beamlines that are not focused on materials that can be used for this kind of experiments. Uh, we can go to the next uh, slide. This is uh, this beamline is quite interesting because we can uh, analyze powders, and the powders could be analyzed in non-ambient condition. What does it mean? That we are able to uh, change pressure, change temperature uh, for in a range that is very, very wide. And for instance, if, if you go to the next slide, you can see that, uh, uh, okay, the, this, these are the different kinds of, uh, of analysis that, that we can do in, in Electra uh, with this uh, beamline. We can identify phases in the materials, we can identify the structure, we can identify stresses and uh, strains, and I have uh, some examples in later, and also we can perform microstructural analysis. Uh, please go to the next uh, slide. Uh, we have a, a furnace, and the furnace is designed to perform experiments in a very wide range of conditions. So uh, I told you before, we can uh, change the pressure and we can go up to several uh, bars of pressure. And we can also uh, go from minus, um, minus 80 um, Kelvin up to uh, more than 1000 Kelvin. So this means that uh, this is could be very useful for studying even processes because if we go to the next slide, we can study reactions. Here we have uh, a, another way of showing um, uh, of showing graphs. Here uh, the red lines are the intensities of the uh, spectra that we collect. So when the you have uh, a, a light bar means that we have a peak. When you have a dark region, it means that we are in the background. So we can see here different peaks that correspond to different uh, structures of the, of the material and different components of the material at different temperatures. So you can see that from 600 degrees up to 1000 degrees Celsius degrees, we have a change in the uh, in the structure of the material that is shown by this uh, this picture and if we go to the next slide we can see what what i mean so in this case we have not only the change in uh, in temperature but we also during the process we add some gas and the gases you see are highlighted in the in the in the spectra and you can see that the uh, spectra that you are able to collect 
are showing the reaction that is uh, taking uh, going on in in the sample so uh, this kind of uh, of system could be uh, in my opinion very interesting for uh, analysis that could be done uh, in uh, the study of the uh, metallic processes that uh, that could be uh, industri of, of industrial interest uh, we can go on and uh, okay another uh, this is the last example and i was uh, more uh, I, I would like to go more in more detail on this example uh, we are able also to analyze the stress in a material stresses uh, are important because they are the first step for the formation of the material and what are stresses if we go to the next slide stresses are uh, Fabio, okay. Yes, yes, I was just, I, I, I did not get, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> okay, stresses, what are stresses? Stresses are uh, different, we can see here the, the different different uh, kind of stresses. One is uh, induced because we can include some crack in the, in the, in the material or others depend on the difference distance that is induced in the uh, surface layers of the material that could be uh, an extension of the distance or a compression of the distance. So you see that uh, in the first image you have an extension, in the second you have compression uh, that is different than the standard uh, distance that is in, in the bottom. So stresses could be analyzed using the um, using the uh, synchrotron radiation and using uh, MCX beam lines. Uh, we have an, made an experiment that in my opinion is very interesting. Uh, if you can go on, uh, okay. Okay, we, we can skip this one and we go directly to the next one. 